Ladies and gentlemen, the time is upon us. Viking GG versus Mud Gollums. Brought to you by Beyond the Schedule because we couldn't build enough hype if we didn't force you to sit in your seats for an extra 10 to 15 minutes. But we are here, ladies and gentlemen. Hello, welcome back. You heard it there fast. Best of five grand final here in the Pro Series EU region. It comes down to this one more series to see who gets the big chair of the Mullah and who is left mainly filling their hands with their tears as they relish in their defeat. Because, you know, some, some of us are sick people that like defeat. I mean, I don't know about you, Jay. There's something, there's something nice about it. Usually it's when you've got that person you hate on your team and you're like, yeah, he's losing as well. But these guys, they don't hate each other. No. There's brotherly love here, right? You got Viking, this team's been together a while. You know they've got each other's backs. We've seen the the comms, uh, the, the Immortal Face been releasing. Love that stuff they're bringing out. And then Mud Golems. You can't hate each other right now. You're on a roll. You think about the progress for this tournament. They have only dropped three games the entire tournament. They've only lost three games. And independent of that, they haven't lost a single series. So Mud Golems have set the standard to be, that's for sure. They have, they have, and this matchup is the best matchup in this tournament, in my opinion. Viking and Mud Golems have shown to be the top teams in this tournament, and they are rightfully in the grand final, battling it out for the winner. And Viking, so far, haven't been looking too hot against the Mud Golems. They have lost the previous two matches in the group stage against the Mud Golems pretty convincingly to the Skeeter Lifestealer, but now in the grand final. First phase bans include the lifestealer. We won't be seeing it now. No, and the interesting thing when we're actually bringing up uh, these teams, we were talking about this off camera as we were interested to see how the opening bans were going to occur because there's this interesting dynamic, right? Because Mud Golems, they love the faceless void. They love the Snapfire as well. And we know that a lot of teams ban faceless void out against Viking because of Shad's way of playing it, the way this team integrates it. So usually the opening bans for Vikings opponents is the Io and the Void. But instead, Mud Golems, because of their openers, have the advantage in this first phase. Exactly. The Mud Golems get the Snapfire, but Vikings counter instantly with a Rubik. And this was probably pre-planned. They were like, all right, we're going to ban the Void. We're going to ban the Life Stealer. They get the Snapfire, and we instantly counter with the Rubik, because Rubik has a pretty decent matchup against Snapfire. Then the Magnus comes out from the Mud Golems. Oh, and we saw this already. We saw this mm -hmm. already. Mm -hmm. The R of Rubik against the Magnus yesterday. Looked pretty good for Viking. Let's see how it looks here. But we, we also saw this type of opener and what it was heading towards, remember? Against the Snapfire. What is the trap that we never fall into in terms of offlaners? And they won't fall into it. See? No Beastmaster. They switch it up. Easy. Slada coming out for Toby. And this guy, I mean, is Slada his favorite hero or what? They took a lot of time out of the reserve time, but still choosing that first phase Slardar. And he's been successful with it. And what I, what I always say is, don't change the running system. Like, they have been crushing NIP with that Slardar. Why not try it against Mud Golems? Mm-hmm. The risk with this type of strategy is when you switch from one series to the other, right? Like, if you prove you can keep winning with, with it, uh, in an individual series, you're saying to your opponent, you still haven't solved this. You solve it. Why should I change something? There is a risk when you switch over, a different team already knows how to solve the problem. But the only way you're going to find out is opening up. And when you're in a best of five grand final, you have a little bit more wiggle room to see if they are ready for that. Exactly, exactly. That's why they picked the slaughter on eight to uh, battle the Snapper, battle the Magnus, and the bands are already coming out. It's the Drow, it's the Troll Wallard, and the amount of carry heroes is being severely diminished here. Like, four carries already banned, both teams still need that carry, so let's see what happens there. Mud Golems, they can pretty much pick any melee hero to pair with the Magnus. They have a lot of options, but the thing is, most of those melee heroes that work well with the Magnus are countered by Slada in lane. PA also banned out. Uh, let's see what happens there. I feel like Toby will get a good lane once again because so far this slaughter has been looking, I wouldn't say untouchable, but he always gets something out of the lane and then goes on and dominates mid game. Maybe this will be the first game of the slaughter. Falls flat. 
Oh, that's true. Usually we see the Enchantress on the side with this Lardar, which is the irony that he's actually the untouchable one, but you're not wrong cool. in that. And I mean, especially with the Rubik combo on the lane, it's the damage differential. It's huge. There is a risk for the Rubik, of course. We can't undermine the fact that really Snapfire should be seen as a good counter to Rubik in general. This hero that just tries to keep his distance, Fable, if you step too far forward, gone. But yep. like you mentioned, it, you're running out of combos very fast. And, and that's the brilliance of Vikings opener with these two vans. Like that, that is the two combos you would 100% lose to with this Slardar Rubik combo. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. And there's the Sven coming up by Viking. And man, they're banning five carries. Jade, straight, banning five carries. They're like, Skeeter, have fun. Have fun, <laughs> but not on these five heroes. You can play anything but these five heroes. Oh, and the Sven I, we just picked. Oh, and the draw you banned yourselves. So uh, let's see what they pick. Like the amount of carry heroes is really running out. And Viking, they are noticing it, and that's why they pick up the Sven at the same time, denying it as well. Mm -hmm. So where does Mike Dolmes go at this point? I'm trying to think of someone maybe a little bit off cuff, someone that you wouldn't think of as often. Maybe something off meta right now. Man. I mean, something like a Lycan feels a bit wonky. Kel Snipe could fall over oh. a little bit. I feel like. You want an edgy, high armor hero right now. Mm -hmm. um, for example, I think about TB being a possibility here. TB, PL, like these two heroes could work out, but they are kind of out of favor for Mount Golems. They're boy, what? Okay, yeah. That, I, I mean, what? I, I I didn't want to say it because admittedly, this was one of the games that Mud Golems lost. This is the only game they lost in the upper bracket run where it more or less looked like they were training and practicing to be honest when they whipped out a skidder anti-mage it was a game where he built the mask of madness fighter build and got completely out farmed i am not too sure like i am not too sure about this kp like no. <laughs> anti-mage into slaughter sven that's a bold move if i see one this is the boldest am pick i've seen in a long time and viking g instantly answering with the chen that's another layer of pressure being applied to this anti-mage and God damn, this anti-mage pick, man. I don't know the walls on Fata, but um, he seems to have a lot and huge ones. Yeah, I'm, I'm kind of rattling my brain right now. I mean, it, it's kind of interesting. They pull out the hero that I would say was kind of definitively at the center of the reason they lost the one game in this playoff point of the, the tournament. And to go back to at least have switched up this element, though. You know, last time, I believe they had, it was like an Earth Spirit and a dark seer and i believe that was a game where baranya was was on his dp um i could maybe still see them going towards something like the death prophet in this game so you have that early kind of tempo controller right now but they are mm -hmm. keeping their draft fairly flexible this pangolier he could be a free he could be a four we could see the magnus in the two or the free roll and snap fire like we said subtly just skirt around the side the question in our minds is if we whipped up baranya's smurf accounts and his main and all that would we find any snap fire games I'm not too sure about it. I am pretty sure it's a Pangalier for Borania. He has been performing on that hero and it also is able to create space for the anti-mage. But Pangalier is also a mid laner that needs some farm. Like this guy, he wants to farm on Pango. So anti-mage and Pango, both pretty, pretty farm intensive heroes. Of course, AM a lot more than Pango, but still, Pango wants to hit creeps. He can hit creeps with the Empower. It's also pretty, pretty nice interaction with the Swashbuckle. But still, I feel feel pretty pretty strongly about this viking draft so far i think viking can really like if they get on some tempo in the early game this am will never come online it seems like and we saw it yesterday khan against mud golems the am game looked really rough for the am there's the wyvern mm -hmm. this is another thing we were discussing um off off panel right is this whole concept of, of save type heroes against things like the troll warlord uh the sven as well They've kind of fallen off. We don't see them as much. Usually the only one we see at the moment is Shadow Demon. This hero, though, against the Chen army, the Sven, all these heroes, when a winner's curse goes off in these fights, someone is very likely to die on Viking's side. Exactly. Like, um, Sven is one of the worst heroes against uh, Winter Wyvern. You've got to admit that. The Wyvern, if he does big plays, he can totally counter that Sven. Um, he can kill pretty much anything that is close to Sven. Why? Because this guy has insane damage. If Sven pops his ult, and someone else gets cursed close to him, he will die 99%. I am so sure about that. So this Wyvern actually has the game in its hands, I have to say. This okay. Wyvern can carry it. 
This is yes, what I like though. Viking, they've they've diversified their damage portfolio because right now it's physical, 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 which was what makes the Wyvern even better from Cold Embrace. This makes Cold Embrace a dangerous setup for the Shadow Fiend in those early fights. Exactly. He can triple raise, of course, but he can also use his ult point blank to blast those people out of the orbit. And I like the SF a lot, and it diversifies their damage output, but they also get more minus armor and Viking and GG. Again! Going with that minus armor draft, Slaughter plus Shadow Fiend. These two heroes can melt the AM. They just melt him. Like in one second, in half a second, this guy can die. And in my opinion, if Milan performs like a god, Mud Golems can win this game. But if Milan is not playing 120%, Viking will overrun them. This is such a hard game for Mud Golems to play. But they can outskill them. They have a lineup that can outskill them. They have a big Magnus ult. They have a big Winter Wyvern ult. They have a big Pangalier ult. And even Snapper, they have good ults. They have good ults to create space for the AM and just give them enough time to get really, really humongous. Because this AM needs to be humongous to stand any chance at fighting Slada, Sven, and Shadowfiend. These three heroes, like every single of those heroes, is pretty good against Anti Mage in their own. And they three combined with the Chen, with these auras. Man, I fear for Skeeter. Yeah, the thing I will highlight, though, is when I look at Viking's draft, I think the, the kind of expecting a good performance-wise where you need to come from it from Viking's perspective is boom. If the Shadow Fiend gets off to a good kind of start, he should dictate the pace of the game. And that's the biggest scare here is against the Wyvern. and he's not able to save because of that. Um, also, you know, you think about the, these heroes you're playing up against, like the, the Magnus, the, the Snapfire, like you can set a pace to overrun this game. And that is critical to stopping that performance you're talking about for Milan. Like, because right now, I, I cannot underestimate, like, I cannot understate this enough, or overstate this enough, rather. No, understate it. Words. The damage is physical on practically everyone in the lineup that matters damage wise. So, if you do not, I, I'm expecting a cast of Fiend build. If we don't get those item timings on the Shadow Fiend, Milan is be going to become the biggest pain in the ass since I was 10 years old and I tried to steal money out of my dad's wallet. Oh my god, man. Did you actually do that? Holy no, smokes. but imagine if I did. My okay. ass would be oh, okay. stinging, okay? okay. Don't steal, guys. Right. It's not okay. It's Unless it's your carry's cool. farm. In which case, think about what he's going to do <laughs> with a versus you. That does not look good. I'm just going to talk about the game now. Um... <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, we're going into awkward childhood. Is like just, uh, there's that long pause, like you're just staring into the abyss of childhood and going, "Damn." Uh, <laughs> we're going to the leaning stage. Three heroes from the mud golems are gathering up on the bottom rune, trying to get two runes. Pangler, master tier from Borania in that mid lane versus the SF from Boom, and top lane Toby plus Aramis are gonna pressure this AM. Hella. Hella lot. I think is uh, where you going up, yeah. Hell a lot. Hell a lot that is. But, but no, no, you glazed over an important detail. You began it there. Master Tier Pangolier. Have a look yep. at that shadow feed. Gold. Only gold. Only golden. Hmm. Gold. I, I mean, what more do I need to say? Not even an arcana, so. Just drop your items now and go jungle level yep. one. I mean, you've done it. Yeah, yeah. But actually, actually, the lane is pretty good against SF. Uh, for SF. It's pretty yep. good for SF. So Boronia, he'll get some farm, yeah, but he also won't be able to pressure the SF before level 6. But on level 6, with a pango roll, you can pretty much kill every hero in the game. And SF is a hero in the game, so he can die to pango on 6, especially if there's a gang coming in from Fada or from Milan. I guess the thing right now, Brian is like just reminiscing back in the days when you could silence with your lucky shot. It's like, damn. If only that was the case now, this would be a counter against the SF. But with those changes, really, when you pick Pango mid, you're looking for that matchup where they're pretty wholly reliant with physical damage to harass you out. Yeah, exactly. Oh, boom. Nice deny already. I mean, he's playing this well. Yeah, you're an SF and you've already got a deny on the first wave. That, that yeah. to me, is like, yeah, you, you know what you are, Master Tier SF. Screw, screw what your gold little emblem says. Yeah, exactly. Like if you look at the damage, Pangolier is 64 plus the uh, plus the Quelling Blade that is uh, almost 80 damage against the well 50 damage of Shadowfiend on level one. Now he's got the souls and a level up. He's got more, but yeah, denying on level one SSF is insanely hard. But he does it. 
Him on top, we're already seeing a little bit of pressure on the skier, but you, know, you can see us under towers this year, so it's not too bad. The concern is what's going to happen at level two once you've got that cookie, and then once you've got like the reposition of Blink, we might see Aramis being picked off as he did go for this null tally start versus any mm. sort of mobility in additional region. Yeah, exactly. His region is running dangerously low. Just brought himself a sentry. No additional region coming up, only two tangos left, but the offensive potential of Harder. And Skeeter isn't too high against that lane because Skeeter, not that much armor, only four outside of tower range. Fata also only three armor. So the physical damage of Toby is really hurting them. Also, you know that Skeeter just wants to chill when he doesn't queue up an oof. Yeah, exactly. Like we've seen Skeeter just queue up that oof every single game. We cast it so far from the Mud Golems. But this game, no, he's going defensive mode. And I think that's a bad sign. He's going to mom again. Maybe he's just like, ah man, this game against Khan. We we need to we need to have a win on AM, boys. And it's the first game of a best of five. Let's let's just try it. Let's just try it. Let's see what happens. It's almost like they were discussing this. It's just like, look, the AM was not the problem when we lost. And as far as like, how much how much is your prize pool from this tournament you want to bet on that? <laughs> maybe. Maybe, maybe, maybe. All right, ball wise, it looks like both of them get the balls at the same time, so they're going to be even again. Uh, of yeah. course, the catch for Varanya, as we saw a moment ago, is when you get up in, in Boom's face, you have to disarm before you disengage, or you will trade poorly. Exactly. He'll just hit you, raise you, and Pango, he has good armor, he has good damage, but he doesn't have much HP. Like His raw HP is pretty low, so he really, really suffers being raised. Yeah, which is why I speed up the raindrop. I really think the the four minute rune is going to decide a lot in this lane one way or the other. Yeah. yeah, and Pango has an easier time getting it because of his swashbuckle mobility. Um, let's see what the supports do to supplement the mid lane. Because they are about even in terms of that from a support comparison, right? How you didn't interfere on the runes. Like both sides, they have around the same amount of CC. I would say you have to be more careful of Farda. Like the snap fire could easily solo pick off another support in this game. Yeah. That's, yeah, uh, I'm not sure, I'm not sure. But Aramis going to the top rune, Zellery going bot rune, Milan also going to bot rune, and even Fata is coming. This is like, holy moly. Like Party everyone time. Party I mean, time. everyone knows how important these, this rune here is going to be. And Baranya is gambling on the bot one, and he gets it. All of a sudden, Boom's a little bit peeved off. He's like, great, I wish I had a support in base oh. right now, because he's going to be chased onto with the illusion rune. And that should force him back and out of the lane. I mean, he could try and hang around to get some CS, but Branya's not done. He contemplates oh it, but he's not going to go for it. Swashbuckle's still on cooldown for eight seconds. If he had gotten a disarm there, a lucky shot, mm -hmm. that probably would have been a dive. Has the TP back to base. And Chen is recalling him. Zellery saving the day with his recall. Super important. If this recall doesn't happen, SF is a very unhappy. Now it's okay. Oh, it's okay. Oh, Borania offensively oh. pushed back up there. Yeah, the ice armor. The ice armor screws him over. Later, and that's going to be why he goes down. First blood is drawn and the Chen impact. Not only the recall, but the choice of creep. Exactly. That recall and the ice armor. Pangali was like, ah, I can just watch back and run away. Nope, you cannot. That's a five second, 25% slow. And he couldn't run away. He got triple race. And that's the race thing I talked about. The Pango doesn't have much HP, just dies to three raw raises into his face. And now the XP lead is humongous. It's more than a level. And this boom is uh, once again up to a perfect start. Mm -hmm. You gotta be a bit concerned for Baranya. Like at least you'll be able to rotate fairly easy. I wanna say easy in the SF as time goes on. But the problem is like this hero flash farm so quick, right? So if you do waste say a minute rotating to set one in the other lane straight, that's plenty of time for the SF to continue to build this lead. You need to now find a way to assault him if anything yeah exactly and even losing your tower is an option like if this opango is being gone on again yep he's low i mean he won't be killed because there's just no spells left but it's the fact that every time he's stepping up for these creeps it's just so obvious this is the weakness of melee heroes against sf yeah they just get raised and even though he has raindrops he's still being punished hard runes again being contested our armors and boom Mm -hmm. Aramis takes the Arcane Rune to just deny it from Borania, and this is good. Look at Borania. He has 50% HP, 70% mana, but no bottle. 
ulti also still one creep away and there's no creep in mid he's just jungling and this mid lane whew, escalating quickly and look at the other lanes we haven't really talked about them but look at shot he is pretty good slada pretty good and well these three lanes all seem one right now for viking yeah they've been applying some pressure on a turby because of his item build always having a mango spare there's there's no real opportunity to ever run this man down and you know we, we are going to see skit going for that mask of madness build to not fight. I just want to point that out to people. There is no way you build this and go and fight, especially against a lineup this much minus armor. That's essentially you giving your life over to the Vikings. Exactly, exactly. This Mask of Madness is purely farming and most likely Ancients is the thing he wants to farm with that Mask of Madness in combination with the Empower from the Magnus. Let's see if he actually skips the battle fury i have seen that happen and you could go for something like a manta into uh, like a mom into the manta maybe yep. we'll see it it makes sense when you got the mag and the other small thing that's been happening i see small it's actually substantial in this type of game is what celery has been doing his creeps have been going over to the ancient stack and blocking any stack so we're exactly. seven minutes in and there's no stacking happening at all exactly like this is super underlooked you often you overlook overlook you often overlook you're this. doing it too um, it's infectious i know yeah it, it's so rough if you're the magnus team and cannot get ancient stacks up because that's the comeback mechanic of that hero or of the carry playing with the magnus it's just hi guys laning uh laning is hard but we get those decks nope ghost they're saving the day for zelery and the boys easy mm -hmm. every time He's even double checking the other one's not being pulled as well. So, you know, AM hey, is going to be forced to maybe beg his supports to stack in the primary jungle so any place to safe because, you know, this, this bottom third of the map, celery zone. This is celery yeah. territory. Like, this is strictly ethical farming. No unethical Magnus stacking shenanigans happening. This Skeeter has to work for his farm. <laughs> and right now. Are man, you saying these are free range running. neutrals? Yeah, they are. They are. And. Man, it, these lanes, like, they are escalating quickly. Toby, free farm top. Sven, free farm bottom. SF, free farm mid. I don't really see where the power from Mud Golems in the mid game is coming from because 33 on his Magnus is also not having the best game. I mean, he's going to earn into drums, but, like, this hero is essentially a playmaker. The only playmaker I really see is the Pangolier. Uh, the Pangolier also doesn't really have the best game on his hands, so, whew. No, he's the poorest of the cause right now. And the lead is just getting bigger between him and Boom. Boom definitely enjoying his laning phase of this game. And he's going straight into that BKB we see him do so often. At that stage, you know, your lockdown is an RP. A winner's curse, not bad. But the, it's not like you're going to be able to eliminate the SF with the winner's curse, right? It's not like the Sven is at a stage where he'll be able to munch through all of that SF's armor and kill him. Exactly. And the Viking guys, they know what what they can lose against and right now it seems like the curse is the only thing that can actually make them lose their tempo right now so they will know hey guys we stay spread out we don't get wyvern cursed we don't get five men rp'd and we're fine no issues at all and if they play it safe if they just do what they know would will win uh, will win them the game this is a pretty smooth sailing game, I must admit. Sven finished the Midas, and they're just farming, and they're just heavily out farming the, the Mud Golems. Mm -hmm. Mud Golems have made an interesting but effective adjustment, right? They've, they've sac they sacked this bot lane. They've left it for Milan. That's one of the strengths of Wyvern, is you can keep shoving out what is the dead lane. And that means they've shoved 33 top, where he's in range to keep empowering Skidder. So this anti mage will accelerate at least. That's something they have to look forward to. It's just a case of whether the map's going to shrink too quickly. Exactly, exactly. That's the thing. When the towers begin to vanish, when Zellery will have his mech, will have his ult, when the towers are going away, how can Mud Golems still keep enough space for farming? Because their heroes need farm, the AM needs farm, the Pangolin, they need farm, they need some space to farm. But when the Chen gets going, when the Sven gets going, the map of Mud Golems is going to be a lot smaller, a lot darker. And that's scary. They do at least have those big ultimates we're talking about, though. You know, Snapfire now has the six. But H3 has got this RP. So they could just go for a cheap, cheeky kill, potentially, on Toby here. Cookie in. Casually walk across. But they decide against it. They see how stupidly tanky he is now as the drums do arrive in the nick yeah. of time. 
Yeah, this guy, 1.5k a wand, drums ready for the extra movement speed. And look at Shard, he just farmed a triple ancient stack up to 6.5k. This guy is a beast, compare him to the AM. He's got more than 50% gold lead, it's mm -hmm. insane. This is another thing that has been kind of commented on time and time again about Viking is their prioritization over stacking, right? Lots of teams will call up on this, but they've, they're taking a step further the way that they use these, these creep controlling type heroes, like we mentioned before, by ensuring that their opponents can't really match that level of farm available at that 10, 11, 12 minute mark in the jungle. They're just playing it smart, playing it economically. Oh, oh boy. Well, when his curse coming out, being killed by his own babies. Does get forced to use the hand of God, but he'll say it's worthwhile now that the winner's curse has gone for 90. Meanwhile, in the mid, boom. Does throw out the Requiem. Did pick up the DD. So, Piranha, I don't think you can pursue this. Need to be careful. Shield Crash gets stolen. The Kisses coming out. They didn't have to fight, but lift back. Nice swashbuckle away. And the Kisses won't kill Aramis. There weren't enough left in the chamber, this big belly dragon. Close one, close one. Almost pretty good for Night Golems, but... As it stands, they just keep getting out farmed. Chen got the mag now. And this game, like the aim is just not where he wants to be. Like this AM is just not farming fast enough. There are three heroes on the Viking roster that are pretty good against him and that also have a net worth lead. So I don't see Skeeter carrying anytime soon. Oh, that, that's the weird part is when you look at the approach that team fight made, right? This is the early phase where you can just afford to, to throw out your ults. And instead, we see this, this solo player temp bot. Then we see mid, instead of committing all ultimates to ensure a huge kill under Boom, who is going to be the momentum setter at this point, they don't have 33 there. They don't have the RP. Like, imagine that fight with RP into Kisses. And then a roll and Thunder for as an example. You will obliterate everyone standing nearby. Yeah, surely, surely. If they use the spells correctly, they can win the team fights. But, but, their damage will lack eventually because the AM, he's not really ready. And well, the Chen, he's getting his levels up. The Sven, getting his levels up. And the counter engage from Rurik is also there. So um, they are just tanky as hell and they will keep getting tankier. Or well, the damage output of the Mud Golems isn't really grown that much until the AM gets like two or three items. Well, you're not even gonna have that spike with Orca because you look across at Milan, that's not his goal here. He's going for the Blink Dagger. He needs to be the perfect initiator with these Winners Curses, and he knows it. You need to grab Viking when they're stacked before they engage. Exactly. And what are they doing right now? They're smoking with Bata, with Milan. They want to find a big pick off salary, dewarding that Observer Ward. Nine. Bata. Winners Curse coming out on the salary. He hasn't got the hand of God, but he does have the mech, which makes this a little bit awkward. They go drag him in. Reckon was going to come out, force the Baranya away, but they won't waste any razors they know it's not a kill swashbuckle in though double thinks the initiation the hellbear cloud getting way too low man they can't get an engage it was a pretty good situation pretty good curse but they couldn't find the engage fata didn't even want to commit the mortimer's kisses because he wants to combine that with the rp but the rp couldn't really hit any heroes because he's still 1k off the dagger but he also identifies he needs the dagger um, similar to the Sableit Magnus, he knows, boys, I got a rough game, somehow I need to do magic with this Blink Dagger. And he goes for the Blink Dagger, trying to just hit those big RPs. The Bud Golibus players are just going for these big plays. Dagger on Wyvern, Dagger on Magnus, they just need a huge miracle team fight with these big ults right now. The sad part is he'd actually be a minute tops out of having that Blink Dagger if he hadn't gone in for this urn. This urn so far... You, know, you can see the lane did not work out remotely how they expected because he hasn't had any charges put into this thing yet. Exactly, he's zero, 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 and earn. It's a nice item, yeah, but in the end, you want the charges. You want the charges, that's why you buy that item, and if you can't get any, it's just 900 golds or 875, 840 golds. Kind of down to the drain. Gold he very much needs. 1,500 gold towards that. Blink Dagger so far. It will be available by the time they look for a fight next. It's just by that time, you know, Boom now has the BKB. He'll probably have the Ogre Club at that point. And they're not even going to wait to see those Blink Daggers come into fruition for Mud Golems as they smoke up and look to move out. Exactly. This guy is so tanky. 1.9k HP with the Power Treads. He has um, raindrops. He has a wand. He's got the Chen behind him. 
man, they are so tanky. I don't see them getting killed by anything right now. Like, excluding this godlike five man big team fight combination. Speaking of looking godly, God Strength used on Sven, level two with the corrosive haze. It's a quick rush. I don't see any chance for Mud Golems to contest this. They're still bot trying to get rid of that tier one tower 16 and a half minutes into this game. This rush and look at Sven. He actually decided to go the dagger. Why? They want to push the tempo hard. He's like, huh, I could build Aghanims, yeah. But if I get the blink dagger now, instead of getting the Aghanims three minutes later, we can push now, we can rush now, we can threaten the enemies now. Look at Fata. Oh, oh, oh. No, 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 no. He'll wall away quickly. Didn't and see him because it's night. Nope. And there's another layer to this as well, right? If you build an Ags against this lineup, you become predictable. Your cast animation, it means there's time for Winter's Curse to be prepped when you arrive. This yeah. way, you're an instant ambush into a kill. Exactly, exactly. And even, um, even the AM, he can reflect the storm bolt so if you try to jump him he can reflect it it's gonna be awkward that's why he gets the dagger to not make the initiation that telegraphed because the agonims yeah it is sweet but still it's heavily telegraphed the enemies see that you're flying in and they can prepare with the wyvern with the rp even with the pangolier and the aim also they can prepare pretty well against the agonims so perfect decision from him to just go for the blink dagger get the faster engage easy mm -hmm. Especially when you already have that Slardar, right? So now you can blink in. Sure, there's a small window originally if it's just the spend where you can activate the counter spell, but because of the Slivering Crush, even if you use it afterwards, you're still going to be stunned by the follow-up from Slardar, and then there's the Storm Hammer. We're talking several seconds of stuns in the face of Skidder, and he does not have the health pool to survive that. No. 1.2k HP, 15 armor. That's not much. That's not much. I gotta tell you. Going for the Manta, pretty close to finishing it, but I don't even see him fighting with a more Manta build. Because, yeah, he is strong, but his armor is just his HP. His effective HP is just not there. No, and Viking, the cores don't really give a crap about their mana right now. Yeah, They exactly. hit so hard that draining their mana will not remove their damage. Somewhat for Boom, but especially with his DD bottled and ready to go and about yeah. to hit 15, he doesn't care. This guy is a beast. Let's see what talent he takes. Toby, see Sparta, yeah. that was greedy from the snapfire. And a price is instantly paid as they claim his head and claim the bounty. And top, they're going God. in, roll the thunder. Shad brought low, but they can't finish him off quite. The RP was stolen by Aramis as well. They have to throw out the Winner's Curse. Shad, low, but not low enough. They heal him up. Aramis is now going to hold on to that RP as he knows he'll be able to use it for a big team fight later. And Mud Golems, just like every team before Ooh. this situation, are falling into the mistake as the RP gets used ironically against 33. He can't run away quick enough. The final hit comes through from the man who stuns him. And Aramis gets himself a nifty amount of gold in his pocket. Skidder just doing all what we expect of um, anti-mage in practically any game we see anti-mage, which is split pushing. The difference being they're on your high ground and you just use kisses to deter them. But Boom is reluctant to leave with anything less than that tier 3 tower. That's when kill kind of salvaged that situation, kind of. But, well, they still got the SF. Top on the charts. If the uh, Gen, if the Sven is taking out of the out of the equation, and even Toby, he's still up there. Like, it's not like he's falling off. Toby's still more net worth than the Bora Nia Pangolier. Like mm -hmm. even if they kill the Sven, it's not like threat is cleared. No. No. And this is the way Viking play. They always have this two carry type type strategy in mind whenever they drop the sf they don't see sf as this hero that's gonna fall off right like we see a lot of teams they do the cast of fiend build and we're wondering mm. if he was gonna do it in this game maybe if the lanes didn't go so overwhelmingly well we would have seen it but in this type of game he identifies that the resources available to mud golems you mentioned it earlier the damage is falling off and that means there's only enough damage to kill sven or shadow fiend yeah exactly this is Chen also now getting the points in Divine Favor, and man, this is their timing. The, the Blads is also coming up for the Chen. Boy, these these heroes look nasty with all these auras, all these all this farm. Branya, mistakes have been made. Cookie gets him to the high ground when his curse oh. comes out as well into boom. They're gonna bring him down to half HP, but he's still with that Aegis and a BKB to play with. And the heals from Celery will ensure he does not need to use either. And this SF is also so Chad. tanky. <laughs> Close one. Good dagger. Uh, Milan. That's greedy. Stun comes out. Snapfire's gonna have to eat the gang attempt because of it. It'll just pop straight into the mix and make sure he goes down to Celery instead. 
Oof. Nemo in AM land. In AM land. He's hitting creeps. Pretty good. Got the 2 2. They might even get the outpost back. They're, they're trying to force someone to come back, and that's what's happened. But you're against the Chen. This is the problem. They yeah. can just bring him back, but maybe there's a small opportunity to make a move. However, Toby sidesteps the skewer. 33 wasn't willing to use the RP for that. Meanwhile, speaking of using the RP, he held on to it all along. Aramis is able to find Baranya. Oh God. When will teams learn to not pick Magnus into the Aramis Rubik? Like, how can you be so cocky, so arrogant? So, so how can you do it? This guy, he always steals the RP. He always RPs you. Like, oh my God. Maybe there's a way to make this work. You just have to uh, RP the, the Rubik, but then you're RPing the Rubik. Yeah. So unlikely to ever be the case. And yeah, the spells now ran out, but that is two RPs worth of value out of Aramis and zero RPs worth of value out of 33. Exactly. exactly. And look at this guy's farm. Like, disgusting. Absolutely disgusting. I'm looking at him. And, whoa, Etherlands ready, of course, but Dagger 100 gold off. Holy moly. He's got almost as much farm as 33. Mm -hmm. <laughs> 33 is just more or less his relevance in this game right now is a spell for Aramis to steal. Doesn't matter which one, they all feel good more or less. But now 43 has had enough of that. They're smoked up. They know they need to make a play. They can feel this game is slipping far, far away from their grips. And they need to go for the high-reaching dunk play. Let's see if they can exactly. get it. They are, they have potential. Skeeter finishing the Halberd. Double blink dagger ready. 33 has it. Milan has it. So they are kind of hitting the first timing. Halbert double blink. If something is happening right now, it is possible for them. That's why they smoke, but they don't find anything. And now Viking counter smoking with the DD on SF. Oh my god, Again. this guy is looking beastly. <laughs> of course, Branya, he's got that lower sword, but you have to cast it to feel safe, and he won't get a chance to. They jump in, they look for him. Nice winner's curse, we'll save him though, Lois. Up to the high ground, Royal Funner charged up, coming down, but Shad's already eliminated Milan, and that winner's curse was way too defensive. And Baranya barely escaping from this. He almost goes down to the right, clicks on his way out. Two hearts down. Hmm? Two also down for Mad Golems, and what did they get? Nothing! What they... I mean, they got, got the God Strength out of Sven. It's just, he's kind of outside their base. And they made Boom use his, the DD, but yeah. it's in their base. So, yeah. getting nothing they would have been good for Mud Golems in this situation. They got less than nothing, right? They, <laughs> they went to, like, someone came into their restaurant to eat, and they had to pay the person to be there eating. That is exactly what just happened, and... This Chen, this Chen death ball strat. I don't think you should let Viking get the Chen death ball strat because this is, just looks insane. Oh my god. Oh, Biggest when right you up. draft yourself into a corner. Nice Lotus Orb returns to stun, but the follow up stun is way too much. Farter protected by the corner brace, but Boom comes to say hello and he's ready with those razors. <laughs> but the big hit's coming out. He's just gone. That crit hurts. Hurt so damn much in SF. He's close to the Dados and. Ooh, his damage is going through the mm -hmm. roof. Close to level 20 as well, where we'll get the damage per oh soul. And then if you can't eliminate yeah. SF, screw screw any thought about the Sven or the Slardar, yeah. right? Now you need to address the boom issue in the room, or you will go boom yourself. Exactly. And the issue is, the Wyvern, we've seen these curses not deal that much. Why? Well, they got the Sven with the Warcry, adding an additional 15 armor. We got the Ice Armor Creep on Chen. We got the Mech on Chen. We got the Akela on Shadow Fiend. Like, all heroes on the Radiant side have just so much armor. Even Chen has 16 armor. <laughs> That's why he's trying to get rid of the creeps. They can't. Toby chases in. Stun out. Cookie to get him away. Net control of Toby. Forcing out the BKB. Means he'll just run away. But the Winner's Ooh. Curse will stop him in his tracks. The BKB is running out soon. Rolling Thunder from Baranya to try and follow through. Control onto him. But he dodges that out. Can't blink still, though. The illusions are controlling him up. The kiss is coming through as well on the Toby. But in the meantime, they just right-click down Baranya in his ultimate. Stun out onto Milan. Has got the corner brace. But on the other side of the fight, they're in trouble. RP's going to be commit and returned in the face of Skidder. Forced away by the Rec Room. The Bash fall up as well. They'll be able to kill him off. And this game is looking all but done. As Mud Golems really have nothing left to throw at this team. Another huge stone and another team. And the Mud Golems, they are just not able to engage. They're just not able to engage in every single fight. They are getting engaged. The Viking boys, they get the jump. 
and the mud golems have to use their spells defensively. Again, a wyvern curse that had to be used defensively. They couldn't actively pressure Viking heroes. Toby, he just he just ran into them and they used the curse to maybe try to get a kill out of the slaughter, but it just wasn't enough. They didn't it doesn't work like this. The BKBs are just too strong. Like Sven with a BKB. Boom with the BKB. They just don't have anything against those BKBs because as we talked about, the Pangaleros doesn't do anything against the BKB. Snapfire doesn't do anything against the BKB. And even the AM right now, he doesn't deal anything against BKB targets because his mana burn doesn't work. The mana void won't work when the enemies are not losing mana. Viking heroes, they actually also don't have high mana pools. So like the draft of Tyre is just not working out right now. And we're... The only chance I see is really five man curse into five man RP into five man pango roll or something. So far this And know. as we know, five men are not in the tournament anymore, so the chance of seeing that many five men performances is very low in Milan. Yeah. Well there might be a man down with Asa Bash or Rose. <laughs> Pretty close one. And the Rush is up. And they will take it, and it's again the disgusting chance of slaughter rush. Look at this. No, you can't just rush in 10 seconds. Slada yes, goes through. Yes, you can. Slada yeah. past the Shadow Fiend. Bye bye, Rush. Yeah. The SF Slada Penitence, it, it's disgusting. Skeeter farming on bot lane. He's going for the Skadi, but what will the Skadi really do? This hero, he still has like 2.6k HP and 20 armor. I mean, that doesn't sound too bad in the vacuum, but if you're playing against a Slada that reduces your armor by 15, soon to be 20, a Shadow Fiend that reduces your armor by 7, uh, not looking too great. Well, at least they'll live to fight now with theirs. I'm in the tree lines. They know what's coming in this direction. They already sent 33 back to base. I don't know if you want to bait yourself here, though. Brian, you need to be careful. They're closing in right now. This is a mistake. Sun returned, but that buys enough time for reinforcements to arrive. They're left thrown out as well, and Baranya. No easy escape from this. The stomp ensures he can't get his all off. Greedy. And normally, normally, Sven's without ult aren't that scary. But this Sven is super scary, even outside of the ult. I think it's more the ability for them to just run at them as five as well. That's the issue. You know, you know Viking are going to kind of play clustered. That This is their style, right? They're not this team that picks up an Aegis and says, let's split push the map. No. They move very clearly with objective to objective in mind. And what you just done is stood in their way of the only towers remaining for them to take outside of tier four towers. Exactly. The outer towers, you just get those and look at this SF. Level 20 talent, Daedalus, 1.k off of the Satanic. And this SF, like at this point, they have two insane carries. Sven and SF both are insane threats. And... I don't know how they deal with either of those. I, I, you have to deal with him now. That's the sad part. He's got two lives, but he's about to complete a satanic soon. And once he's got that, he's now on unkillable in this type of game. They move in. BKB gets forced out. RP stole by Iris. Held on to again. And the counter RP, but no. The Requiem follow up interrupts him. Skidder, real low, able to move away. The buyback comes out from Baranya on the side. Aramis being brought down with the kiss. As far as able to have some impact here, Aramis will tick out. But now Fada in trouble. Go set the only buys you a few seconds here. Cookie for maximum impact, but he knows he's going down. And with these buybacks, what can you really achieve? You do not put any real dent in Viking only getting the kill on the Rubik. Milan, running for the high hills, not able to get out. It's just gone. And that's his dieback. And with that, Baranya, this is a desperate roll if I've ever seen one. There is no clear objective in mind, and he knows it. Fada stunned up. No way to get away from this. They'll run him down and look to kill him off. That dispel is just too goddamn strong. And Baranya, he runs into him. He's like, hit me instead. Please, don't touch my carry. Skidder able to get in the tree line, but for what? GG comes out. They know that this mountain is unclimbable. They'll have to address it after they get some climbing equipment in game number two. That was of dominance, like 99%. Destruction, 20 to two, 29K advantage 30 minutes into the game. In this final fight, it almost looked good, but 33 didn't quite hit Boom in the RP. Boom was able to get his ult off and just fear the enemies away. If 33 would have gotten the SF into that RP, that could have maybe been the team fight, but nope, didn't hit. No chance for the Mud Golems. And this must be a wake up call. 
so far they have been looking pretty good they have been looking like the favorites they have came uh, from the upper bracket but right now viking just showed that they are in the grand finals they belong here and they they have a shot at winning the entire thing mm -hmm. and i guess the question in my mind is you know that, that in regards to that last fight and what you're saying 33 that's the they, we saw what the the team fight potential is is this on mud golems for not maybe being a little bit more gambly with trying to find these objectives to force a fight or is this just big credit for viking and the way that they avoided getting stuck in the and bogged down in those five on five weird engagements i think viking just did what you have to do in dota pressure the enemy if you pressure the enemy if you don't let them play in their comfort zone they are going to make mistakes they cannot apply themselves they cannot set up those perfect team fights if you just run at the enemies pressure them take their towers take the map control make their map small make their vision small make like the map a scary place for them to be they'll make mistakes and this pressure if you apply too much of it the enemies just crack and we saw this happen the mud golems they couldn't stand a chance right now they they tried everything they're insane players they got so good players but still they got crushed they got crushed 33 he got crushed aramis he just these are peace from aramis again looked even better than those of 33 and that shouldn't happen right that shouldn't no. happen uh maybe we're seeing the team issues when you bring a new stack together like we, i think the classic example is everyone knows how to win a game if that makes sense it's it's what happens along the way is when you get tripped up it's when you have to recover adapt the plan that's where we can see the problems arise right and mud golems maybe that that's their weakness right now is that so far when we've seen them win like let's be totally honest they've been winning their lanes convincingly back to back to back almost every single goddamn time that they win and, and this is a preview of, of what can happen when you trip yourself up when you pick this this baranya pangle is one of his type of specialist type heroes but it requires you to be ahead it requires you to win your lanes and this type of draft i mean all i'm gonna say to round this out is anti mage skid are still 100 percent loss rate in this tournament may maybe time to pick his carry a little bit earlier because that is something else i want to give good credit to on viking's side is they eliminated practically any good carry from this game very quickly with their picks and bans exactly exactly we saw it five carries being banned them first picking this event in the second phase not giving the mud golems a lot of options and they settled for the am and the am got pressured with the instant gen uh answer in the draft like they just got punished if you, they just got punished that's why you don't pick am that early you can get punished if the enemies know what they're doing they can punish that am and another game i think now 50 percent of mud golems losses in this tournament are with the am right two games out of yes. four games they lost two of them were with anti-mage maybe time to settle for another hero or or Pick it later. Pick it later. Don't show it that early. And especially don't pick it into Slada because that's a rough matchup. Yeah. I mean, we were saying it was an experimentation with that Slada, opening up against a different team and saying, see if you can beat it. And so far, Mud Golems have shown that they cannot of game one. Or maybe they just can't beat anyone when they've got an anti mage on their team. We'll have to see if that's the problem. If the Slada is beatable, I expect we're probably going to see it again coming out from the side of Viking until it gets addressed by Mud Golems. But this is the best of five, which means there is more wiggle room for experimentation. But, you know, just like when I was in college and filmed that way, I know at the end of it, I've got to get straight on that road towards winning, okay, in life. And that is how this works. You can throw the first game out of the window and say it doesn't matter. But now... Now is where it gets a little bit worrisome because if you lose two in a row, you're already on the edge of the abyss. Let's see if they can fix this going into that second game and Mud Golems can even this up 1-1 one, one apiece or if we're slowly going to be shifting ever closer to emulating what Team Secret have been known to do so often.